On June the 1st, Andy Ruiz Jr. shocked the world by beating heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua. But can he do it again? So much to discuss, so much to debate. Carl Froch, David Hay, Tony Belly and Paulie Malinaji, welcome to The Gloves Are Off. I don't want to speak for everyone, but I feel like I'm speaking for 95% of people when I say that I was in shock and I was amazed. I did not see that coming. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It felt a bit surreal. It didn't look like it was AJ. He didn't look prepared for him. I'm forever saying bodies don't win fights and don't judge a book by its cover. He's the prime example. No one foreseen what was coming. You have to control center ring in this fight. You have to dictate the kind of fight this is going to be. We're going to fight like this tonight, my man. We're not going to fight the way you want to fight tonight. Let's start at the beginning. Jerome Miller was placed by Andy Ruiz. Did, did that affect the mindset of AJ or of any fighter? Do you think that played um, a big part? I think it's always up for discussion. Jerome was a big talker. He was a, a big guy. He was seen as a threat to AJ. Um, and he was a, a guy who talked enough to, first of all, possibly get under AJ's skin, but also motivate AJ. You know, you could see when AJ spoke about Miller, he was motivated to not just beat him, but to hurt him, you know? In comes Rui, he's a sort of a letdown for everybody. Suddenly, he's an opponent who's not always not talking trash, but he's sort of sucking up to AJ. You know, he's sort of giving you the, the uh, perspective that he's happy to be here. He's, uh, you know, he's just happy that he stepped into a big payday. Fight week, you know, it's not the same. The Jarrell Miller fight week would have been explosive, you know, because Miller would have talked a bunch of trash. He would have got everybody excited. He would have motivated sure. AJ. Sure. Now Ruiz on fight week is wants to hold the belt. <laughs> he wants to take a picture with, with AJ. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He wants to take but, selfies. So, so, so the people, <laughs> and, and not only people, you know, even if AJ doesn't want to underestimate him, the people around him yeah. are probably telling so him this guy is not So is it a fundamental mistake dangerous. we fighters make? I remember we, we filmed uh, a series of the gloves are off with Miller and AJ in here. Miller got under the skin of AJ, so mm -hmm. uh, AJ probably emotionally invested himself in that particular yeah, point. Did change, he struggle? Did he struggle change, to I up think, his game? Yeah, I think Ruiz? he did. I think the late change was bad for AJ in terms of getting his mental psyche up for the fight. I don't. I think he was too relaxed. I think AJ would have took his foot off the gas and relaxed mentally. He's not got Jarrell Miller growling at him anymore, and he's not worried about this shove at the press conference. He's gone. Who we got in? We got Ruiz. Let's have a look at Ruiz. He looks like a physical wreck. Bodies don't win fights. So AJ took his foot off the gas. So to answer your question, I think it was the late replacement was bad and it went against AJ. I don't think that played any part in the change. I don't think it would have helped him, though. I don't know. It definitely doesn't help him. It messes with his mindset a little bit, messes with his tactical game plan. It messes with the sparring that he's had in to prepare <coughs> for someone. But ultimately, it's a fight. I just don't think he underestimates Andrew Ruiz. They all knew he was a dangerous fighter. I think the only thing that was missing was the fear factor. Did Ruiz play the fool to catch the wise? Did he play the nice guy? Would you have given I'm your opponent sure. the belt to hold? He's not the good one. He doesn't need to. He assumes everyone else is a fighter like him. Yeah. So he, he gets just, it. The one thing... Would you have done it? Would you have given... The, the, the one thing I think about this, this fight that people completely forget is how, how old was AJ when he started boxing? 18? He's been boxing 10 years. OK, well, it's Andy Ruiz Jr. is the same age as him now, and he was boxing when he was five. So he's probably got 13 years more boxing experience, yes. being the smaller, fatter so guy, getting beaten. He's used to fighting a big guy since he was five. If I'm, I'm learning poker. I'm learning, I'm learning poker at the moment. If someone's been playing for 13 years, years longer than me, how long does it take for me to close that gap? And who? Do, and how long does it take? And also, if he's a natural, he's just a genuinely nice guy. Nice I disagree. But when the gloves go on, I, he's he's I, dis I, dis okay, I so disagree. I had a situation. I told you before the fight. I had a situation with a Mexican fighter early in my career played me the same exact way, and I find out I beat him, but he, it was such a hard fight that it shouldn't have been a hard fight. Does it mean he's I felt nice bad guy? for him. He was so nice. <laughs> it was the same thing. It was actually a similar situation in, in, like, in, in this way, okay? It was a similar situation in this way. I still remember this guy's name, Jesus Santiago. It was supposed to be just a, one of my come up, coming up the ladder fights, and this guy wants to take a picture at the weigh-in. He was being nice. He's, like, bowing to me. I'm like, <laughs> on fight night, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you how much this nice played guy. on me. Let me tell you how much it played on me. That... I stared into my opponent's eyes for the glove touch before a fight every single fight of my career. I want to look at you in your face when the referee's giving us instructions, and then I barely touch gloves. That's just my style. I'll look at you in your face, and I'll barely touch gloves. I don't want nothing to do with you. On that fight, the only fight of my career, I couldn't look at him. Not because I was scared of him, because I didn't want to feel any more bad for him than I did already. <laughs> so I was, like, looking away, and then we touched gloves. And we, you know, like, and the bell rings. 
and round one was going, and it was a typical slow pace fight. I'm jabbing him. The crowd starts to boo because they want to see some action. So I start showboating, doing a bunch of showboating stuff. Bro, this guy, it's like I woke up a sleeping dog. The rest of the fight, he's raking me with gloves. He's on top of me being dirty. I, I won them in a tough fight, and I won the fight. But here's the thing. AJ, the same thing. First couple of rounds, yes, Ruiz is coming forward, but he's just very hands up coming forward. AJ's winning the rounds. Ruiz just gave him a couple of swings, but nothing's happening. Suddenly, what did AJ do? He woke up the sleeping dog. He dropped him. He knocked Ruiz down. Once Ruiz went down, it was like, you didn't let sleeping dogs lie. This guy just came out flying after that. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm, I see the same thing. Well, does I, that I, mean he's not a nice guy? No, is, is it doesn't mean, well, I, we're, all nice I, 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 we're all nice so guys. Are we all nice guys? Listen, some guys aren't. Some, <laughs> some guys are, some but, guys, but, but Ruiz but, is a nice guy. I mean, he's a, he's a family guy, he's a act. nice guy. But, but, but it doesn't, but, it doesn't it, mean I'm, it doesn't mean he's going to be nice to his opponents. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was extra nice. I feel like he was going the extra mile but to in, play this, play this role. Like, he, he went the extra, who wants to take a picture with the belts? <laughs> yeah, that's who wants to take a selfie with your opponents? doing that mid-fight with his struggle to change tactics because all of a sudden he's, 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 he's let this guy hold his belt, take selfies with him. Being He's his mate. Fight. You've got yeah. to be nasty. Listen, when you when someone punches you in the face, you get nasty. No, yeah, well, no one's ever smiled. Well, once he got dropped, he got nasty. He, he, he's, a, he's a beast. When when he gets in a fight, we're all beasts. You put us into a corner, we're gonna fight every single man in here. I'd like to think we're all gentlemen, but you put me in a corner, I ain't gonna stop fighting until someone's on the floor. What's the worst conspiracy theory we've heard? In I, heard was a, to, I heard it was. A, I heard it was a clone of. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I heard that. I heard that. I, 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 I genuinely <laughs> said, "Do you know that wasn't really AJ?" What do you mean? He went, "You know, you got uh, Donald Trump's got like the the, the, the other guy that t does certain <laughs> interviews and handshakes." What are you talking about? Someone was genuinely trying to convince I had that. me I had that. that it wasn't you, really Ain't Joshua. And this, this was the only Joshua that didn't do boxing. <laughs> what about you, Paulie? <laughs> it's all that. I don't know. I've heard all kinds of stuff, but uh, you know. I've heard there was an argument in the dressing room before the fight uh, with uh, Eddie Hearn and, and AJ's father. I heard there was a panic attack. Just like, I don't know, man. Like, things that... Vertigo. There was a full moon as well. I heard a full moon. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like... <laughs> uh, I, I heard there was vertigo. I heard there was he had a bit of vertigo from what I don't know. Was it concussed from this alleged knockdown in sparring? Yeah. Listen, it's as simple as this. and Don't overcomplicate anything. The guy just got hit on the head of a man who weighs 19 stone 3, he didn't see it coming, and he didn't recover. You see, you see, right he didn't see it coming, Carl. Side of the his, head. his legs, did, did, could you tell me one time after that first knockdown where his legs looked absolutely solid? Because I can't remember the yeah. point. And when Ruiz got up, and it would, and to be honest, Ruiz's knockdown at the first point looked heavier than AJ's, because mm. the left, the way the left hook hit, he, yeah. he, he went straight down. He left him with yeah. an uppercut first. It was a... when he got up, his legs were strong it's immediately. Okay. He walked at him. Where so, AJ got up, and it was like, Oh, and, and Carl, AJ never Carl, recovered. So, so no, what you're saying? You so what you're saying? And I said to you straight away, "This is for, it's over." So what you're saying? I is, said that straight away. That knockdown. You're saying none of the conspiracy theories are true. No, you're just being caught on the head of a man no. who weighs 19 stone three. You didn't recover. It, boxing is not complicated. You see, there's you see, so much. Uh, people will always talk rumors. Like I don't know, man. And most of them, I'm telling you, in my experience, most of them are never true. You, you know see, what I mean? Like, see, I, the people always there, just ride with them what, and make them pick up momentum. Yeah. Man. Just to what Tony just, said, are we seeing a the problem there? Is inability to recover. You say he's the best athlete. He can't. He doesn't boxing. slip punches. Why don't you recover? Like, people who can't slip a punch can't get a break. If you have to block every single punch. You have to have That's your hands up. Your hands up. His lungs came back. If you got to put your hands so up, you're going to get hit to the body. After the Klitschko and you saw what happened. You saw what happened. So Klitschko wasn't hit him in the body. Relax style. Yeah. He, he was, needs to. Yeah. He needs to somehow learn how to relax, relax when you get. Okay. Punched. So, so as soon, as soon as someone starts punching, he, tight, so he tightens what, up and what, does what the high guard, which leads his body. Yeah. So, so he gets hit in the body, drops his hand, and gets hit over the head. So Dave, what we're ignoring is the fact that he's been boxing ten years. The responsibility of being a world champion is this: once you're world champion, once you become world champion, everybody around you in your way is watching you, he's studying you, he's knowing your every move, yeah. understanding what you've got. So they've got a year, however he's, how long he's been champion, like Ruiz has had all that time to look at Anthony Joshua and think, that's how I'd beat him, that's how I'd beat him. He's been strategizing yeah. for all this time. For Anthony Joshua, he had five weeks to prep for, for, for Andy Ruiz. So therefore, that's the responsibility of being a champion. Is it just through lack well, of the, experience? After 10 years of me, oh, I started boxing when I was 10. When I was 20 years old, I was boxing internationally in winning tournaments here and there, going to Copenhagen. I was, I was fighting at an international level as an amateur. After 10 years, he's fighting at the top level yes. as a professional. He's had to do some real fast tracking. And whilst fast tracking, you might skip a few lessons here and there. You might skip fighting these come forward guys. In the amateur, the amateur system used to box in, it was all long distance stuff. It was all long distance. How often has he had someone on his chest 
mauling him. The, the type of amateur boxing I used to do when I was boxing, it was real physical. It was real tight. The referee used to let it go. There was no point scoring system. It was like a professional fight a all the time. He's a champion learning on the job. Yeah. He's learning his craft still. There's you a know, definite massive void in his pedigree in terms of amateur experience. It's because of how quick I was. How many tournaments did we enemy. go to around the world? Okay, it took me 11 years to get a silver medal at the World Championships. How long after he boxed did he get a silver medal at the World Championships? Mm. So all those teenage years of getting bashed up and learning and getting black eyes and headaches, he's missed that, so he's kind of getting it all now. I can kind of relate a little bit because I started boxing at 15. That's late, so, that's late. Uh, yeah, that's that's late. very late. That's so I had my first amateur yeah. fight at 15 and... And, and I was thrust upon, I won my first ABA title in my 16th bout. That's crazy. So I'm ABA champion in yeah. 16 bout, so I can kind of relate to him a little yeah. bit, but you've got to understand, I studied boxing from a child. So I, I, I was doing things as a 16 bout fighter. I fought the reigning ABA champion in my first ABA championship fight. And I was doing things that a 16 bout kid shouldn't do, because I studied professionals. I admired my, my Roy Jones, I used to watch what he'd do. And I would go to gym religiously and, and try and repl replicate what I was seeing. I was never as good as him, but you know, by, by watching these fighters, it allowed me to do different things. What David's saying is right. Them, them hours and months and years in the gym, they, they paved the way for you to, to learn and do different things in the ring in the future. Has and he, he hasn't had that. Has well, he had the, that? The has he had that? Imagine walking in has the gym for your first time in an amateur yeah. gym, and someone goes, yeah, has, in five years' time, you're going to be Olympic. Has, boys. He, has, <laughs> he, has he put too much so emphasis? Boys, the only thing we can't buy by or pretend to have is experience. Paulie, you were impressed by Ruiz's calmness. He was calm from the first bell, because again, I, I, the way he was calmly walking AJ down, almost too calm and I thought I thought to myself does he need to take a shot was, was that, that right was, was that, that a tactic for Ruiz to take the center of the ring and back up oh absolutely he took the center of the ring and he had AJ on his so, back so, so, foot so, from so the starting off. on the back foot was that down to to Ruiz I think it was making him fall out like was. was it was it a wrong it was move? it was I think in, in my rematch against Groves I said to myself and I mean, my cracker I, I wonder what to take the to center that. of the ring because <laughs> the how first fight how many people watch that listen the first fight I was on my back foot let's get serious I was on my back foot circling the ring like AJ was against Ruiz I was on the back foot we'll just cut all this ramble out <laughs> so anyway, I was on my back foot, getting counterpunch, trying to land shots that weren't going to land, and I basically got bullied around the ring and beat up in the first fight with Groves. I turned it around because I took a load of punches and Groves got tired, basically. And then my man jumped in, Howard Foster, did what he had to do. He knew the script. Yeah. In the rematch, if you look, I came out to the centre of the ring, I stood in the middle of the ring, and I said to myself, and I said to myself, in a 12-week training camp, I'm not taking a step backwards. I'm holding the centre of this ring. If he comes to me, I'm going to meet him as he comes. If he moves, I'm just going to cut and the and ring off. So, so that is, is and AJ was on his back foot, under pressure from the off, thinking, yeah. what's so, this little skid? So, so, so we heard Rob McCrack, we heard Rob McCrack in the corner saying, uh, hold the shots, straight shots. No, was saying, so is that what he needs to Rob do? Rob McCracken's had a bit of criticism, right, for giving simple, precise, clear instructions. He did the perfect job, left, right, down the middle as he comes. But he didn't do that. You can't give him too much, like slip the jab, throw the uppercut, left up, then work the body, then get back behind the right. You can't do that. Left, right, simple one, two, Lennox Lewis, one, two, down the pipe, Klitschko, bang, bang. It works. He wasn't doing it. Yeah, but you he's can't, not doing it. someone to do something they, they don't instinctively do. Yes. AJ was concoursed, he was dazed. You don't know. When you, he was asking all, questions, what do I do? We've all been on the floor. Been on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Rob so, gave him so, good so, instructions. So, so, Unfortunately, so, so when, AJ so couldn't carry okay, out. Okay, so when job. he said, why am I feeling like this? Mm -hmm. You know, did you panic? Do you think this ain't right? Did, I, I must, I'll tell you, when I, when I saw that and I heard what was saying in the corner, I thought, as, a, as an ex fighter, this ain't no, right. I said, what did what, you say to that? I said before. He would never recover from that third round knockdown. I don't think it was that he didn't recover. I think he just hadn't been in that situation where everything he was doing Panic wasn't stations. working. I've had fights where nothing works and you, it's just horrible. And you're sitting down and you're thinking, oh, and they're saying, do this, do that. I think you go next round, try it, and it's not working. You think, but sooner or later, you kind of but get, you get numb, to, you get numb to the punches, the, and you kind of just but, grind through, and you get a little, you hit him with a body shot, and you think, ah, but you only numbed, get, but he never that's numbed to the punches. You get numb, every, after a while, you get numb, right? You get numb to the pain. When he got numb to the head, yeah. this dude really kept digging the body, yeah. and, and then body shots were massive. But this is also why simple instructions there 
yes, okay, at times simple instructions are good, but you also need something a little deeper. It's not about the punches. It wasn't one, the punches. Two, because just don't want two with yes. the guy who's reacting right. to no, you yeah. throwing punches. He's reacting right away. Are you, Ruiz, are you saying Ruiz, Ruiz is reacting. cracking in the corner? Yeah. I, I, don't, I, think, I don't think really you, technical, yeah, yeah. Pun, technical because, stuff. Because, because punches. This guy's flying at you. He's, he's reacting to everything you're doing. So, so he's I, I reacting to everything you're doing. Because, okay, a one two can be given, one two instructions. The one two can be given you at any point, any okay. situation in a fight, well, uh, at any given at any given time. Let's look that, at that. That is a basic instruction. And Rob McCracken said that, yeah. that yeah. is a basic Paulie instruction. Paulie wants to hear an instruction of listen, stay away from nah, this guy. No, no, well, I, I want to hear the instruction. Okay, how are you setting your distance for this one two? How are you setting up the punches? Well, well, I don't want to your legs there. Are your legs there? Are your legs too close? That's like when you tell if somebody tells me you've got to get to the body on this guy, but I can't close the gap. How am I going to get to the body? Tell me how to close the gap first. How much information can you get across in that minute, Paulie? Okay, but you've got to set the distance first, proper distance, because nah, nah, Andy Rob, is punching with you Rob constantly. Rob could see what we could see. He could see his man was in trouble. He could see his man was struggling. He could see his man was dropping down to the sides of, of Ruiz. So he had to bring him back to basics. You can't, use your heart, you use your reach, you can't one, bring two. him back to basics. Once he gets to that, then everything comes off the one-two. It should be the, 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 fight, the fight should be... Anything the fight, more should, I, 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 I can tell you what, the fight, needed to be, the fight needed to be a replication of what he's been doing daily in the gym. Whenever I fight somebody, for instance, when I fought Mormek, he was a comfortable fighter like that. I hate that style come forward. So we got Jacob Fragomeni and a small, load of small guys who come forward. And we had certain movements we did. We had set patterns. Go this way, then turn this way. Roll here, throw the body shot. Tie him up, walk him back, turn him. So that this goes stuff back that to we, did he have the preparation? Yeah, then you, you just not. do... So when, when you sit in a corner, you think, OK, now we're going to do this, which is the thing that we've done a hundred thousand times in the gym. Let's work on this. Well, walk him back, back tie him up, walk talking. him back, turn him, then jab. Don't just jab, that, you know, don't jab from when he's in front of your face because it was bounced off really, him. You need what, to step back and counter him. But or, sometimes you're processing so much information that you forget in the corner has to remind but you. But you've done it he's so many times know that. Yes, Tony's 100% right. He's supposed to know the things we're discussing. But sometimes you process so much in the gym, in camp, that there's things you take in and sometimes you forget them and you have them there, but somebody has to go, yo, remember this? It's got to be instinctive, as you're but that's fighting, where the experience comes And you're told everything comes off the jab. Slightly you jump through, slightly right, then that means you've got your distance. How about if the guy counters with a massive... Okay. How yeah. about every time you throw a jab, the guy slips it and hits yes, your left hook? Exactly. Or slips your right hand? But, but, Are you going to say, keep jabbing? No, but, 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 exactly, you've got to pick yeah. it, you've got to faint yeah, it, wait for it, then jab. The reason why Rob told to do that is because he wasn't doing it. He wasn't doing it because what he was doing is but different. He now. was giving it, yeah, but he wasn't yeah. giving it. He wasn't giving it. There's a reason, there's a reason why was, it was getting hit. My whole style was divided. Was was and and Carl Froch's style was like, we wanted, we needed the other guy to punch so we could slip and counter. So the other, everyone, every time someone jabbed at me, my whole thing is make them pay for every single punch they throw. So it stops them throwing. So they can always go, jab, he jabs, I slip like a crunch. Yeah, they think, out. okay, I'm not going to do that again. Right hand, they throw around, I counter that. You've got to stop him doing it. And Ruiz stopped him doing what yeah, he'd been doing on the pads, on the bags, and in his sparring. He, he nullified it with counter punches. Did, did you not think it was odd that he was crouching down to, Lewis, uh, to, to Ruiz's high? When he, he must have done it in training. Did, That's did, what he must have done. He must did, have did, practiced it. I've, 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 I've done that. Whenever I, whenever I fought short guys, I come down low. If you stand up high, they yeah, get underneath you and push you back. Or they come over the top. Or they come over the top. If you've got longer arms, I come down low to their height. So he's dropped. But it wasn't working. It was clearly not working. Height and reach. Height and reach. Reach in boxing is a massive advantage. Mm. If I can hit you and you can't hit me because mm. your arms aren't long enough, yeah. I don't care what you're doing, whether you're rolling the slip. I know Mike Tyson mm. wasn't as tall as half the guy he knocked out, but I consider that a massive advantage. Mm. And AJ neglected that advantage and he was waiting too long and he struggled to recover, so it kind of didn't matter what the tactics was or what no. the builder was. Or well, maybe he did recover, he but then the change. other shots after that, that he didn't recover. No, you might know it's not just one shot you get hit with. I've never given one shot and never recovered every round. You know what's, you know what's crazy? At a, world class, at a world class level, you have to have a variation. You're right and you're right. You have the time where you use height and there's a time where you get low with a low fighter. You've got to give different looks. Yeah, yeah. Because when you stay when you stay up high, what happens? Your ability to change range is easier because you're up high, so you you can take that faint half step back and change range. When you're down low. You can shoot that jab, and, and if he's coming over the top with something, you can you can get underneath it already and shoot right back at him because yeah. you're already in range. His left hand was you know, down. He was yes. getting constantly getting caught by the So you're already so in you range. So you bring it up. So if, sure. But if you but but you you got to be tighter when you're going, getting low and getting in range. When you're higher, you're higher. Your ability to change range is better. You know what I mean? Your ability so to step back and body shots so you're more so you're using well. you have you have both. I mean, they're both. They're, none of, none of them are wrong if you know how to use the mm. the weapon of choice. Mm. And of course, variation is the key to winning a fight too. So so. So there's different ways to approach this. What I'm saying is, what did AJ do? So how AJ reacted 
after the stoppage, would you have preferred to have seen him a bit more animated, a bit more disappointed? He might not have had any energy. He looked relieved. Uh, I, what I, I did, what, the part that I kind of didn't, couldn't get my head around is in the, in the, in the, I think the seventh round when he got put down, it wasn't like a big shot. He seemed like he just got cuffed. He just wanted a little bit of a break. And so he goes down, gathers himself, gets up at eight, and then turns his back and walks away from the referee at eight. That's when I was like, Why did he do that? I don't know. That's what. That's the one thing I don't understand. Come on, you he gets. I, I, that's what. I've, well, I tried to. Maybe. Maybe he realised that it's the AJ show, and you know the referee is going to give me the benefit of the doubt. So I'd never get up in a fight at eight and turn my back on the ref because I expect no, referee no. to go do you fight ever, over. Do you ever remember Alex Arthur and Michael Gomez? He looks. He goes. He hits the floor. He looks at the camera. He smiles. He's just being knocked down, yeah. and he gets up and he walks away. It's just a natural reaction of some people. I don't know if I'm so much disappointed because because AJ was hurt, he was physically exhausted, you could see he was exhausted. The body shots were having a compounded effect and he was in he was in serious trouble. And he was getting caught every time he tried to punch, he got counterpunched towards the end. The body shots, the head shots were clipping him, his legs were still gone. But the stop is when he when he went over, he kind of looked at his corner, then he spat his gum shoulder out, okay, good move, give yourself a little yeah. bit of a breather. Mm -hmm. Then when he stood up, he knew he stood up on eight seconds. You have to then look at the referee in the eye and convince the referee, I want to keep fighting, by the way. You've already been knocked down three times. Does, does, does he fight. think he's getting the benefits of the don't stop He possibly does, he does but he, he walked back to the corner. It was a smart move. It was a smart move. If you want to fight, it's a smart move. If you want to fight, it's a smart move. If you want to fight, it's a smart move. There's two things, okay? Here's two things here, okay? I've well, that's down, ultimately down, why I've, the referee I've, stopped the fight, I've, I've because been, he didn't look I've, like he wanted okay. to carry on, I've been, did he? I've been he down, like I've been down several on. times in my career, OK? Unfortunately, and, and well, fortunately, I guess, because I have the experience here. We all have, my friend. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, there's two reactions I always gave to, I always thought about. One was, hop in place to show the ref I have legs. There are other times where I've gone, I've gone for walks. I'm looking at the referee, even if I'm not looking at the referee, I'm communicating with him. The reason for the walk was to get to the furthest part of the ring, away from the guy, from the guy who just knocked me down. So that way, when we restart, he has to go come further to come get me, because I, I may I be hurt. Think that okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so there's two this things, experience. There's two no, things exactly. I'm thinking. But when I'm going for those walks, I have to understand that the ref may mis mis misunderstand yeah, me. Yeah, so I have to make sure I'm communicating, or if I'm not communicating, because the ref is counting, you can talk to him. If the ref you is know? at eight, would yeah. you walk over and yeah. walk at eight? Here's the thing. No, exactly. At eight, I'm and already making sure. If you get up at sure, two, three, four. I'm already making sure, because the bottom line of all this is, as a fighter, it is your responsibility to convince the referee that you and are you're okay. To continue. It is your responsibility. The ref's, the ref's responsibility is to look out for your safety. So if he has any doubts, if you give him any doubts, you are, he, he's, do you he's not wrong to stop the fight. Do you think AJ gave him? Yes. By turning around, I think he gave him doubts. Now, here's the thing. The fight could have been taken out of AJ with body shots. You know, it's possible. Yeah, and well, and that doesn't make AJ a coward. Just but stop. I will say one thing. Any chance to shut you up, just for one sec. Mm -hmm. Given what you just said mm. and your, your analytic view on getting hurt and walking away mm. and going to the corner, what did AJ do when he got caught and he walked over to the corner? What did he do wrong? What was going on in his mind? What was his well, game he, plan? There's a saying that was sold to me very early when Forget I Forget the saying. What was AJ's plan? That's what was he doing? Well, that's the, what I'm going to get into. Go on, get to right. it. <laughs> <laughs> you're excited. <laughs> you're excited. <laughs> Somebody told me one time, and, they, and it was a saying in boxing, fatigue makes cowards of men. Body shots. We talked about the body shots. And the AJ was very, very uncomfortable with the body shots. What do body shots do? They fatigue you a lot faster than you want to be, you want to get there. Now, to call AJ a coward is too strong for me because nah, he's shown he's got guts. I watched the Klitschko fight myself. Mm. Get up in front of 90,000 people, not only get up after a knockdown, but then go through the next couple of rounds That's where happened. it's not going his way, and he's still focused, concentrated, until he finally turns the steadies of ship and turns around and gets a knockout against the next world champion. So he showed he can next, do it. So he showed he can do it, but was the fatigue a factor in this fight to take the fight out of him? At that moment, was he just like, wow, this guy's coming at me, and I'm, I'm too tired to deal with this. Are you saying he quit? I'm, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. I'm playing devil's advocate because, again, the reaction in that moment, could he have quit? It's possible. It's up for debate. A kid coming from the situation and the place he's come from, they don't quit. I don't care what anybody says. There's no way in a million years. If he would have quit, he would have just... He, he, not, at no point did he say, I don't want no more. At no point did he shake his head and say, no. His first reaction, and, and I think Michael Griffin is the best referee in the world, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 he saved my life yeah. against the Donald Stevens. I genuinely think that... He didn't save my life against Kester in the first one. Well, he saved my... <laughs> <laughs> Just give me one word, yes or no. I cried 
after all of my losses. My answer is, he's got no choice. So he needs to have that flashback in sparring now. I'm having a hundred pound bet with you now, and you get to pick the winner. Boys, what did you learn from your first defeat, your first real defeat? Yeah. I'll go with probably you, Tony. Did it make you a better fight? What did it do for you? After the first defeat on paper, I didn't really believe I'd lost, so it didn't really affect me much. Uh, where I first really saw me defeat was against Adonis Stevenson. That's where I really felt, and it just broke my heart. I remember going back to the hotel room in Canada, crying myself to sleep, and just thinking, I've wasted 15 years of my life on this business and this game and this sport. That's what. That's honestly what I thought. Did it not make you a better fighter? A hungry fighter? It made me... It made me rethink of all the plans I'd made, of everything that I was doing. Uh, I was always hungry, but I was always driven to be world champion, so it just made me rethink everything and then ultimately go up in a weight. My, my first loss against Carl Thompson in 2004 was, I think, the, that was my, the making of me. You know, up until that point in all of my uh, professional fights, my first 10 fights were 10 knockouts. None of the guys in those fights um, you know, could ask any true questions of me. One of them managed to knock me over, but it was just a single shot out of the blue that I didn't see. None of them really pushed me. And the first time I needed, the first time I needed to have that metal, when I needed to dig deep, there was nothing in there because I hadn't done that in training. And it was a, it was a horrible feeling to need 12 rounds of fight in you and only have three or four. It, it wasn't enough. And that, I sort of made myself a promise that, you know, I'll never lose again due to not preparing correctly, not paying the price and not punishing myself in, in training. It's just a hard game. It's a tough, tough sport. It's not Yeah, the reality easy. check. It was a hor horrendous one. It was a horrendous one, but it was very much needed. Paulie? Yeah, I think when you have your first loss or when you have a loss in general, I think you find out about your, something about yourself. I cried after all of my losses. I cried after every single amateur loss and I cried after all my first four professional losses. Ultimately, it comes down to you find out about yourself, you find out something about yourself, and that's how badly you really want this because you're going to get tested on, on such an emotional level after these kind of losses. And I'm sure AJ is feeling that. I'm sure AJ is feeling that even right now, you know? Oh. And it's, it's something that he's got to be motivated, and a true champion will be motivated because a true champion, this will, it'll always burn if you're a true champion. Always. A loss will always burn if you're a true champion. Cole? Wow, I've done a lot of crying. I, I feel like I want yeah. to give you a hug. Very yeah. emotion, yeah. emotional guy. Yeah, thank you, Cole. <laughs> but, uh, my first loss was against Mikel Kessler. I was in Denmark against the Danes. Yes. So I knew it was close. So yes, I thought I'd lost. I didn't think okay. I'd done enough. Got beat by the better man on the night. I had to hold my hands up and say, I thought I'd lost. We flew underneath the volcanic... I'm not making excuse, but we flew under like two days <sighs> before the way. But it sounds like you are. Underneath the vol volcanic ash. And I got there late and I weighed in like eight, nine pounds over my normal fight weight. And I've never done that because I make the weight quite easy. But the fight was off for a week on the build up. So in my head, I've got, I've got a reason, I've got a good excuse. I've done the weight wrong. Mm. So I told myself I lost because of this. And it was close anyway. And I'm fighting for my world title in the next one. And don't forget, amateur or professional, I've never been knocked out. I've been knocked down, I've got up to win both times. Never been knocked out, never been stopped in a fight, amateur or professional. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm tough, I'm hard. Nobody's going to beat me up. I can always hear the final bell. I'll always go to a decision. Um, I'm either going to knock you out, you're not going to knock me out. 100% you're not going to knock me out. You might put me down. And when you go into a fight with that confidence, I don't know whether it's stupid or whatever, I walk through punches. You've seen me walk through punches. Homer Simpson, Homer Simpson style. Yeah, Homer Simpson style. <laughs> I just walk through punches. <laughs> stupidly. The, the stupidly Taylor walk fight. through punches to get mine off because I was that confident in my chin. So I, I didn't learn that much from my last set except for the fact that I need to stay focused and keep my mind strong. And like you say, the reality check, how much do you want it? Do you want to go home now well, and forget that, it? That, your, that, that, your, that, one, your one is the most intriguing one. Out of all my, of us. Mine, mine, the one that really meant something to no, me. I understand. I know straight away which one you're going to say, the, but, but the, I want to know how did you keep going? Because all the first few, you know, look, just look at it from start to finish your career and then to what you've achieved at the end is unbelievable. But to come from what you was doing after all them early losses and, and going through the pain and that, how did you, how did you manage to keep you going? You lose your first three so fights, right? Yeah, but the one that meant something was when I, when I drew for the world title. And to me, it made me realise I was a boy in a man's body. I wasn't mentally prepared for that responsibility. I didn't really believe that I was 
when even getting into the ring, I was the best fighter in the world. And there's only a handful of fighters in the world, cold world champion, I actually think they are the best in the world. Mm. And I knew even before that I got in there, I thought, if I win this, I don't think I'm the best in the world. So I'm going to lose it in my first... I was a boy in a man's body. And that I wasn't mature enough to deal with it. It was the best and the worst thing that could have happened because it made me want it more. Uh, it made me all of a sudden realise, you know what, you were way off in a position that you want to be. Because I knew when I became world champion, I was going to retire world champion. I was never going to lose world champion because I believed I was the best in the world. Mm. So we all will learn lessons from it. The one question I've got to ask is, there's so much on the line uh, in this rematch. Just in one word, is AJ right in going straight back into it again, David? It solely depends on if we're all wrong. If we're all right, or if, if what we're all saying is correct, then the rematch isn't the right thing to do. That's whereas, a no. Whereas if we're, if, if, we're, if we're all wrong, and AJ just had a bad night just because he had a bad night, everyone's, everyone's due a yeah, bad night from time to time. Everyone's yes, entitled to a bad it, night. From your opinion, is it yes or no? It, I, I don't know. It didn't look like it. it did, for me, looking without knowing his training camp, without knowing what he'd done in training, who he's sparring with, what his technical from what abilities are like. From what, from what saw. I saw, it looked like he was just better than AJ. So it's a night. no. It looked like, um, stylistically, he just had the, the answers to everything AJ had usually used for consistent victory. So that's a no. I want him to. I want it. I, I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong, and I want him to. I want him to somehow conjure up whatever he needs to go out there and do what AJ does, and that's dominate. Just so, give me one word: yes or no. If I was him, I would do yes. But if I was his manager, commercially it'd be your, horror, Commercially it'd be terrible if it was your not fight, to do. If he was your fighter. Yes or no? If he was if, your if fighter. If I was in charge of everything. Just answer this question. There's one way to say, no choice. Yeah. If this man doesn't face Andy Ruiz in a rematch immediately, his titles are all going to Deontay Wilder. They both come under Al Heyman banner, Andy Ruiz and Deontay Wilder. And if you think Al Heyman is going to let Andy Ruiz face anyone but Deontay Wilder, he will want one face, one name, one champion. So your answer is yes. Yeah, no, my answer is he's got no choice. If he says no, he's going to be labelled the biggest coward the boxing's ever seen. He's going to be called uh, everything under the sun. And let me tell you, the real fighters will go, I'm not facing him. Do you think if the, do you think any other fighter in the world would have three belts and go, you know what, I think I'll give Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua a shot? It's just called not touching him. Get, get, get in the is line. Is no, who needs him, club? Of course he is. If, if, if he doesn't go back in with him, he's, he's not going to get a fight with anyone. Yes or no, Carl? It's dead right what they're both saying. Dead uh, right. It's he dead said it. no, he said yes. No, but it's different. No, but no. It's, it's commercially, a complex question. And for the fact that he's got nowhere else to go, nobody else to fight other than the immediate rematch to put his brand back up there and get him back, back on the top, he's going to get frozen out by Al Heyman. You're right. Mm. But if I'm looking after the fighter, if I'm Rob McCracken, I'm not so convinced. So it's such a bad loss, I don't want to see him in an immediate rematch. Immediate rematches often go the same way as the first fight. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes, why? If AJ quit against Ruiz, then he knows it in his mind, and he'll say, I need time. Like, he quit. I quit. But if AJ, and I lean towards the fact that he didn't quit. I lean towards the fact that he was discombobulated, and, and he, didn't know, he didn't know how to react in that, during that 10 count, during that count when he was laying against the ropes. If he knows he didn't quit against Ruiz, then he knows he can make this right, okay? It's, it's a psychological thing. I think going for the immediate rematch tells you that AJ knows he didn't quit in that fight. So let's talk fight. What can he do to adjust? What adjustments can he make to get the win? He needs to stop in this next fight. Trading up close if you're not practicing trade. He needs to fight how Use he, his he advantages. needs to fight. How he plays it, keep it long range when he, when he gets close, don't trade with the guy, tie him up, walk him back, do what Klitschko does, do what Lance Lewis did. Quite slow it, slow it down, lean on him, don't stand old in middle school, range. Old, old Go quite, way to basics, back to basics. It's quite Stop. simple, just employ the tactics you employed against Joseph Parker. Why give the guy a chance? He's a lot smaller than you, don't let him work up close. Parker's mentality is different than Ruiz's mentality. Parker's mentality different, is more of a box, fighters. Ruiz is more of a come get you yeah, guy. Parker the boxer. Number, 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 really number two, I don't, I don't think you fight safety first. I do think you have to implement the game plan. You have to control center ring in this fight. Because if you allow Ruiz to boss the center ring and you allow Ruiz to get comfortable in the kind of fight that they're fighting, you have to dictate the kind of fight this is going to be. We're going to fight like this tonight, my man. We're not going to fight the way you want to fight tonight. Well, I'm going to dictate this. So that, and if you're going to win tonight, you're going to win in a fight I so decide that, to that, So that goes so back to what Rob was saying. Straight left, straight right, control what's in front of you. 
Yes, but, but, understand, yes, but you, have you have to understand your distances. You have to understand your timing. You have to understand. It's again, those are simple game. Those are simple tactics. Yes, they work. I you have to understand like when to make those decisions. Uh, yeah, there are yeah. simple. There are decisions in a fight that are so simple but so complicated, and people you, you, never you, understand. I don't, you don't, you don't agree with that. Something as simple. No, I agree with some, what he's saying, but I don't think he can win like that. No. I, I agree what he's saying fundamentally. So, so you think he has to buy in the back foot? You have to, he has to I, I, Fundamentally, what Paul is saying is 100% correct. But if you look at what you're dealing with and what AJ brings to the table, he can't do that. He, he can do it for, he can do it in pockets and he can do it enough for a part of the round to win that round. Mm. But where I think he's lacking is when the distance is closed, when he does start fighting, it, it's, it seems like it's a shock to the system. And when I fought um, Jacob Fragameni, he just stayed, he st stayed on me, I got cut, and I had to mentally prepare myself for that fight to know it's going to be horrible. I'm going to get hit a lot. I mean, it's just but now he's nice. mentally prepared for what's in front of him. That's a big factor. So now he's it'll mentally make, prepared. Make a big, that but, that but, makes all the difference. In but how about the first time he gets hit in the next fight with the little gloves? He knows is it gonna, is, I know, but is it going to send flashbacks? Flashbacks? Is he going to think, oh, it's happened all over again? He needs that. He needs to have that flashback inspiring now, today, tomorrow. He needs that. Get, he needs to get beat up today, tomorrow, all the way up to the fight. So you get conditioned. Great, it sounds great. crazy. You get you conditioned can, to get you a beat. You can, you do, he, do, he, he does a lot of technical sparring. He doesn't do yeah, but he full doesn't, out sparring. He doesn't sparring. seem to be the kind of fighter where he makes his sparring partner's soft touch. I think he, 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 he's the kind of fighter where he wants his sparring to be hard and no, tough. I, I told Carlos Takam, who was one of his sparring partners, and he said he just does technical sparring. He said he wanted to start sparring, and he said, cut, and... Uh, his team was like, no, 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 just do one round here. He said it was a technical spa, and he said we spoke, it was right in the middle of the camp. And he said he, he, would, he wouldn't, wasn't doing full-out sparring. One of the biggest conversations is his physique. Do you think he's, he's probably paying too much attention to strength and conditioning and uh, more, than, more than actually fighting, the, the, the art of boxing? You don't need big muscles. Muscles don't win fights. He looks like a bit of a weightlifter, and that's tiring. It's purely down to... You've got to relax when you fight. No matter how fit you are, no matter how good of an athlete you are, if you don't relax when you punch or when somebody attacks you, you are going to gas. OK, so let's get into Ruiz. Do you think this might affect his hunger? Would it give him I that think silk pyjama syndrome? Know. What he's not going to do is just start eating any... He's not, you don't have, to, don't have to worry about him going eating pizza and drinking, cos clearly he does but a lot of that. But he's got his, yeah, so he's he, got his biggest payday, <laughs> and he's now centre of attraction. He's like, he's but like he'll wanna a go main player. I, I think this fight will give... It, there's one thing when a fighter believes they're good enough to be world champion. They tell you, you can tell yourself, as, as Tony said, you convince yourself it. I convinced myself when I was a little kid, I'm going to be heavyweight champion. I didn't know it. My, I just told myself it so many times, it became reality, and it, it, it worked. He's told everyone, I'm going to be heavyweight champion, and everyone's gone, yeah, of course you will, son, of course you will. Yeah, take that piece right your hand. <laughs> but he's now done it, so he, he's now made it happen. He's now the heavyweight champion of the world. And I think after, after a win like that against the Adonis, against the guy who was supposed to be the best of the best, he's now proven the point that he's been telling everyone that no one really truly believed and now I think that's going to give him an added confidence now. So he now knows it. He's believing it and he's knowing it because he's done it. He's going to be even sharper. 10%. He's going to be better. Oh, he's had more confidence. Be working harder and be Psychologically, he'll know now. He can take his best shot. Yeah. At first, he's like, can you take your shot? You know, if you get hit, you he knows it can hurt AJ. He knows it. So if any of them are going to have an added confidence, if any of them are going to be better going into the second fight, it's the guy who's knocked the guy out in the first fight. Oof. I think. That's just a comment. So that's why I just, think it's a risky rematch. It, that's just like, it's a I'm lot not saying of AJ the, can't win the rematch because he just, can. It's just harder. To beat Andy Ruiz this time is going to be way harder than last time. Yes. Way harder. No, so he's right. not only going to need, he's not only going to be good, need to be good enough to beat what he got lost to already, he's going to have to be good enough to beat someone who's even better and, than and that. But also but believe now also, he knows he can be hurt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he knows he can hurt. But he, there's also another thing too, you know, if money is your motivation, then again, you're you're not really going to go after this rematch. Is your is your pride mm. your motivation? So. Do you have pride as a man to, to, to let, are you going to let this guy get away with what he just did to you? You've all made millions out of the game. Did I'm it? Did it? Did it? Did it, did it, did it affect? Did it affect? Your hunger, your desire, your 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 desire to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning. Oh, people, people, people did it always, make a difference? People David. always, or people always say. You kind of do it. For, do you do it for the money or do it for the fight? You, you, you. When you're in the ring, I've never been in the ring and thought oh, I'm getting, I'm getting paid. Like when, when we fought, 
did money come into when you're not fighting? Reese. Money is nothing no, it's in, not. is in your mind. If one is your motivation, you're in, you you're won't, in get, to the, you're won't in get to the level that we've got to through thinking about but money. But I think, 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 think when you lose sting, passion, the hunger. Listen, I, think, I, think, I think when you lose passion, I think when you lose passion, money can soften the blow. Mm. When you're younger, it doesn't matter. Like when I was younger and I got beat, and I only got beat in big fights, you know. So until I accept my last career fight, but but I mean, so I got paid in all my losses. So it's it's. I got paid well, but it never softened the blow until the end. Like, she like I saw, I, once I stopped crying after my losses, the it's, reason I stopped I, crying I, is because I, I was I, thinking I, more about, ah, that's all right, I made some If money. someone could you trade know? that loss for, if someone say, okay, what we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll take the money, but we'll reinstate a victory instead, would you take it? Early on in my career, yeah. Exactly, that, yeah. that's it. I, but I'd second rather, second, rather more, second part of my, yeah. second part of my career, no. You can, always make, you can always make money. Like I've, I've always like softened the blow later on my so, so Paul, even, so, even with this. So, even Paul, with this, so Paul, like, let's go back, Paul. Let's go back. So yeah. has AJ earned so much, too much, and is it taking that edge that's away the from thing. him? Has the, it taken that, away well, again, from him? Is he still the, as hungry? That's the thing. We're no. going into an immediate no. rematch. No, 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 I feel like he would go. He would not be be in the immediate rematch if he didn't feel. The passion. He's not doing it for the money, is it? I think the only person that can answer that is AJ, though. Yeah. It's a difficult one because it's down to your personality and it's down to your lifestyle and the person he is. is so he that's fighting changed for money from day one. That, or is his desire? Things, Carl, it's a I had desire. Deep, it ain't nothing to do with money. I had desire right until my last fight. And after the last fight when I beat Groves, that last fight, I thought to myself, the Everybody training was hard, my elbows were killing me, my Achilles tendons were sore, the sparring, I was a second, a split second behind in the sparring. I knew my time had come, so I wasn't enjoying it anymore. I was getting up running in the morning thinking, I've got, a, I've got to spar Tony Valley this afternoon. I've got to spar somebody who's quicker than me, one of the amateurs who keeps shouting to punch me. Chris Eubank Jr. throwing 100 punches a, every minute. <laughs> and you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to keep him off because I can't knock him out with these 18-ounce gloves on and slow him down. So you're not looking forward to it, you're not enjoying yeah. it. So once I won that fight, I was like, I'm done. Where's my gloves? Throw them away. I'm not fighting again. I get that. And I I've get, not fought I again since I retired. Saying. The desire was gone. No amount of money was going to get me out of retirement. I do get that, but don't get me wrong. But everybody's different. Somebody fight. flashes a big yeah, check. but that's what I'm saying. You've got some like you that like I fighting. I just love fighting me. That's what I'm saying. So it's, 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 not, it's not about dough. You it's down to your personality. And you, you've, got, and you've got some guys that have, have made our but, sport. They're, they're, the they're train, the train can't wait. You're all easy. The camps weigh on you. See, when you have passion, I think we'll always all love fighting. Mm. Everybody, what fighter doesn't love fight night? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, You're the center of attention. But does money the take that, that Yeah, of course, but the, away. the, the yeah. Oh, not the, on fight night. No, I don't fight Not on, on fight, fight night. Fight night is, is its own special moment. But but when you think about the training camp, you know, yeah. ugh. but then, you know, money money can motivate you sometimes when you don't want to do it. And you say, oh, you give me enough money, I'll do it. But AJ's and you're not doing it for the passion. You're AJ's earned a lot of money very quick. You're not and he's reached a, a very high level very early on in his career. Yeah. With he's not it. doing it for the million. Exactly. He's doing it to get the revenge. Well, this is what we're asking. Yeah, is he, though? Yeah, How badly does he want I don't think he's doing it for the money. I don't think... Even if there was zero money, he doesn't need the money. Yeah. What does he need to buy that he hasn't got already? So why does he need to go for a 12-week training camp and get punched in the head and potentially get beat again? So that's what I'm saying. He needs to have that desire of wanting to fight. He needs to absolutely love the sport. Athletes, Otherwise, we won't see him again. Boxers in general, can, could you say Bolt run any faster if I said I'm going to give you 100 million. trillion if you can run far past 9.8, no. 9? Could you do that? No, you can only go as 100 percent to 100 percent. No one's going to give 120 percent because there's more money on the By line. Going into the rematch, it shows you that it's not about money. Yeah. Friendships aside, and I know it's a tough one because everybody gets on with AJ. The old thing is cool, whatever. Friendships aside, being honest, hand on heart, in a word. Does he win the rematch? Tony. Yes. David? If he, I can see him winning the rematch, if he does I all just of want the a things... Yes or no, my brother. No, I don't, it's it's hard, it depends. It's, it's, it's impossible. It's an impossible thing to... If he can... He has the physical capability. Know what capability. We, know what you okay, can yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm going to get to he, he, he has the physical capabilities. If he to can win it. the Olympics after two years and be, be just, just such a good he can learn how to fight a comfort fight. I, that, all I think this fight is, he's not used to fighting someone young, is fresh, and comes forward. It's not a no, it's a... If he can, I if he can, he can. if he can is. learn to fight someone who comes forward at him, and he's toughened and so ring can he? So does, he so can, does he yes. win the rematch? If he, if he turns up in anything like the condition he turned up last time, then it's no. 
It depends how he's training. Does he win the rematch, yes or no? I, 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 so you don't know? I don't, I don't, I don't know. No, but we, we, I don't know. I think it's, just, it's a 50-50 bet. It could go one way or the other. From your professional it's opinion. Everybody could go one way or the other. No, 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 no. You don't, someone I don't mean gives like you that. a million, who are you putting it on? You've got to put it on one of them. Someone gives you a million, who are you putting, putting it on? I'm putting it on... I'm counting the half, putting AJ on a points decision or Ruiz with stoppage. I'd put it 50-50. So which one? Where's the million going? You've got, you've got to put it on one or the other, a million pounds. It's not your money. It's not our money, but do you? But <laughs> so, you want to win. That doesn't make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't your money, it's then. It's your money, then. Don't worry about it. It is your money. And you've got to pick one, a million quid. That's the only way you're going to get some of the answer from someone. You've got to do your, your heart and your brain. You've got to just try and pick a winner without an explanation. We, 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 it's hard to do. Not got his answer. Oh, it's very hard to do. Not got his answer. Well, David well, is in trouble making up his mind. It's earlier we're, in this debate. He, he, he's putting every scenario through his head. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You've got. You say yes or no. Does he? Does he win the rematch? It's nothing know. personal. I can, I can see it happening both. I can see it happening both ways. You I can, can make see a case for David, David, it's nothing, it's nothing and I can see it. It's nothing I, personal. I, I'm, I'm okay, gonna, okay, okay, okay. The fact that okay, I know what I'm putting this down to the fact that he's taken the immediate rematch. I'm going to say AJ. Paulie. I say. I know what he's going to say. I say. I say, AJ wins the rematch. And now, hold on, hold on. We gotta let him finish. We gotta let him finish. Because everybody gets to give their own. I'm amazed I only said I give, one win. I give, I give AJ, AJ wins the rematch. That's my prediction. So your answer is a yes. AJ wins. <laughs> it wins okay. in the fall. Cole. And then they fight three. Cole. I'm going to get straight to it. Yeah. But just before I get straight to it. Seven disclaimer. words you've got to. Seven right, words we're right, not straight to it. Just, just, <laughs> just give me ten seconds. I can see how Nine. either of these fighters can win the fight. Eight. It can be very close. Either of them can get knocked out. Because we've seen Ruiz hit the deck. We've seen AJ hit Three the deck. Three seconds there. I think Anthony Joshua wins the rematch. Beautiful. I totally agree with the boys. I think he wins. No. The only person's answer I don't believe is David. Why? I don't believe your answer, man. I, I think if, because if he would have, if he needed, uh, if he would have, do you like understand that. what you're going yeah. to say? I, 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 I understand. He, he, he can see not, both guys. You're not, you're not going to put yourself in a situation that. If if what but you happened, can be wrong, it's not like we're like we're not like he's got a good Thomas. team around him who know him, mm. who trust yeah. him. Who he's making, making he, he, choices. Can see, he can see a way both guys win this fight, we, and we he can clearly all, see it. Yeah. He just doesn't know how yeah. it's going to yeah. unfold. And we know the, this is why we're The fact that he said, "Yeah, I want that rematch straight away," is the same reason um, Roberto Duran, um, uh, sorry, um, uh, Sugar and Leonard took the rematch. Well, I'll tell you what, then. I'll tell you what. I'm having a hundred pound bet with you now, and you get to pick the winner. Hundred quid. Let's shake my hand. Who you got? AJ or Ruiz in the ring. Start have a push and a pull, kid. Take it. Take it. <laughs> okay. 100 pounds. Draw. We have a draw. Whoa. A draw? <laughs> That's a bet. You you're not going to get an answer out of them. You're not going to get an answer out of them. That means if any of them win, you lost it. I find I'm it really right extraordinary oh, no, that you, you can't answer the question. No, 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 can, can you not pick a winner, honestly? Can he change his mentality? Yo, yo, I'm done. I'm done. I know why it's so hard. Because I can make a case of both of forever in a day. Thank you very much. I'm glad we're all still talking. It's been a good day. Cheers, John. That's fantastic. Thank you. Don't miss the fight. Cheers.